Hi everyone, it's Kirsten here. In my last video, I did briefly mention that I have recently, well, I haven't recently torn my tendon, but I've recently become aware of the fact that I have a 30 to 40% tear in my patellar tendon on my right knee. And I've been suffering with pain from that injury for quite a long time. However, I pretty much downplayed it in my mind because I've had issues with this knee for the last almost 10 years due to three patellar dislocations. Um, I've torn the patellar tendon um, 10 to 15, maybe a 20% tear in the past. Um, I've done that one or two times, uh, as in I've re-injured it. Um, I have patella alta, which is uh, when the kneecap sits too high on the knee closer to the femur instead of in its groove that it should be coming back to when you, you know, bend and straighten your leg. Let's see, I've damaged my meniscus, I have strained my ACL, I have done a whole lot of things to this poor little knee, and so on top of that, I mostly struggle with Hoffa's disease or syndrome, um, which is basically the pad uh, or cushioning that your body has under the patella, the patella, which is your kneecap. Um, and so mine is really inflamed, slightly deteriorated, just basically messed up. So that uh, definitely uh, lends to some discomfort. So with all that history in the knee, I figured oh that I was just dealing with pinched cartilage or something and I was just getting through this entire year with uh, a lot of ibuprofen and heating pads and it, it was not good so I finally talked to a doctor about it expecting to get sorry about that camera just shaking my cat was <laughs> messing with my tripod anyway so after all that I finally saw a doctor I was expecting to hopefully get arthroscopic surgery to maybe clear up damaged cartilage or something like that uh, and hopefully provide some relief and clear out the inflammation that just simply was not going away. Um, but after getting an MRI, what I found out is, like I said, I have quite a large tear in that tendon and it is close to um, the level of 50% which needs surgery to repair, so I could definitely benefit from a, a surgery to repair that tendon and fix my patella alta. I won't go into what all that entails for time's sake, but that would take four to six months recovery and I would not be back to dancing in the time frame that I need. So <laughs> instead, I turned to a solution with my doctor that I've actually gone to in the past, which is PRP injections, platelet-rich plasma injections. That's what PRP stands for. So just to be clear, what I'm going to talk about in this video is uh, what PRP injections are, how the procedure goes, um, what kind of injuries this procedure treats, how long it usually takes to recover, slash what the recovery process is like. Um, I will also cover how much the procedure costs and generally what it feels like to have done. I, I might have missed a few things, so there might be more than that included in the video, but um, if you wanna know about any of those things, hang on till the end to make sure you get your questions answered. As I will explain further on, uh, I also have had this done by two different doctors and I've had, I guess now, five uh, experiences with PRP injections in my career as a dancer. So um, from me telling you about the differences and similarities between those experiences, hopefully if you get this done, you will go in having a pretty good idea of what it might be like for you. All right, so first off, I will just uh, briefly explain what the PRP injection process is uh, so that hopefully you can you know, understand this a little bit better. So like I said, PRP stands for platelet-rich plasma, which is actually a component in your own blood. So what the procedure starts out with is drawing your blood 
and then they put that blood, which is um, anywhere, I think from like 15 to 30 milliliters of blood. It's not a whole lot, uh, depending on how much you need injected into your body. Uh, they take your blood and put it into a centrifuge machine, which basically filters out all of the other components of the blood so that you are just left with the platelet-rich plasma, which is then injected into the injured part of your body, along with a few other things that they add to the injection. Um, so, it's kind of a two-step process. Blood is drawn, then injected into the injured part. And uh, what I mean by injured part, this could be anything from, I think, muscles, tendons, um, it could even work for nerves. It's really quite a general treatment that could be done on a variety of issues. So, uh, no matter what you're struggling with, you could research it on your own to see if this would be right for you. I had actually gotten this done I think four times in the past, around the year 2013, 2014, um, I'd gotten it done for the tears in my patellar tendon, as well as some of the damaged cartilage, and it was also injected into the Hoffa's fat pad, which is the pad I was describing under the kneecap earlier. Um, and I did experience relief from that. However, I will kind of go slightly into the difference from my experiences because um, the first time I got it done, it was with one doctor in Houston, another time, or this last time I got it done with a doctor I'd never seen before, um, as in not previously, I had a consultation and all that before <laughs> this, uh, procedure was done. No worries. So there were definitely some differences in my experiences. The first time, uh, the doctor in Houston actually did not, uh, need me to get an MRI. He just listened to my symptoms, tested my injured area, and knew that I could um, find relief from this treatment. So what he did in order to figure out where he was exactly going to inject the PRP was I lay down and he actually had an uh, ultrasound machine. It basically allowed him to press the little scope against my knee and then an image would pop up right on this huge TV screen right next to the bed I was lying on. So he was able to see exactly where the tears were in my tendon and what was going on, what was damaged, what was fine. And he kept it on there while he injected um, the PRP into my knee so that he could actually see that he was going into the torn parts and then filling it with the appropriate amount of fluid and then taking the needle out. So I know this is maybe not for the faint of heart, but it is worth it. Um, I would say that uh, something I should have mentioned earlier is this is a good option for people who could kind of go either way between surgery, but surgery isn't really an ideal option for them at the moment. Like for me, I'm a dancer. I need to get back to dancing. I don't want to commit to a huge surgery uh, so I went with this treatment and um, the plan is for me to actually take four to six weeks to really rest, do minimal activity, just enough to keep my strength but not pushing it so that I can hopefully experience healing in this tendon because like bones, tendons take around four to six weeks um, to heal. Um, however, your, depending on your issue, if you're considering this, um, you could either jump right back into activity like I did the first time I got these done uh, with my first doctor. I think I took three to five days after each round of injections and then I went right back to dancing. Um, so if you are listening to this and you have a minor issue, you could probably benefit from this. I would not recommend jumping in right back to heavy activity because that was honestly stupid on my part and I ended up making myself worse. However, once I eventually did allow myself time to rest and um, in the subsequent times that I got the procedure done, I learned, I took more than three to five days to rest. I took more like two weeks and I really experienced results then. Um, so this time around, um, I didn't, I, I did get an MRI and there was no ultrasound imaging uh, done while I was getting the procedure. So I got my blood drawn as normal and then um, the doctor, instead of looking at an image kind of in real time, he studied my MRI 
decided exactly where he was going to inject uh, the PRP and then just did it right then and there and it ended up taking less time because he wasn't um, looking at an image and then like making decisions as he goes. So that was different. Also the first time um, my leg was pretty much paralyzed for like a whole day or two. I think the that the doctor included Novocaine, I think that was the substance, into the injection. So once that got in my bloodstream, it actually numbed my entire leg <laughs> and I was not able to move. This time, the only uh, thing that happened was um, the area that was injected was the only area that was affected. So I didn't experience numbness or loss of function in any other part of my leg. It was just the knee and I could not bend or strain it really at all because I had it, the patellar tendon had completely been immobilized, which obviously is really affected when you bend and strain your knee. Also due to the severity of my uh, tear this time compared to last time, I will like I said, be taking the full four to six weeks to heal. Um, and I've noticed my mobility has come back slightly slower than the uh, other times I've gotten this procedure done. And I've just experienced a little bit more pain, but that's probably just due to the fact that there's literally twice the amount of tearing this time compared to last time. So other notes, this procedure is supposed to be able to help with inflammation. It does uh, relieve pain after the initial <laughs> period of it getting worse to get better as in, you know, you have to recover from a needle being put in your injured area. Then after that, it seems that the um, healing properties that were injected into that area really kickstart the healing process and you do experience um, some pain relief this has been my experience both times. And this is also something that you can get multiple times. It is not like a cortisone shot where there is a risk of your tissue actually deteriorating. That is why I am not an advocate of cortisone shots. I've done my research into that. Um, and I've not had any doctors who were foolish enough to try to prescribe that for my knee because that is especially a sensitive area and hopefully I have a couple more years of dancing left in me so I definitely don't want to risk any sort of deterioration. However, cortisone shots are a good um, a good method for healing for maybe other injuries. You know, there's a reason they exist and they certainly do help people. Just for my situation, uh, especially in the knee and for people who are going to continue in their activity, their heavy activity for hopefully years to come, I would not recommend cortisone shots. Um, but again, I'm not a doctor and I don't know your personal situation, you the person who's watching this, so um, do your research and talk to a doctor rather than just taking my word for it. But as I was saying, you can get multiple rounds of this. It's not limited to just one time. Um, to my knowledge, there really aren't many risks at all to this procedure. Um, I'm sure there might be some side effects other than just, you know, the pain and stiffness that comes right after the procedure. But honestly, I think it's a great option for a lot of athletes or people who um, don't want to go to a surgical option um, and want to get back to their activity and are willing to just decrease their activity levels until they experience the full healing results. Um, but it's just really a great low risk option, I believe. Um, so I would definitely recommend it. And hopefully after my four to six weeks with this experience, I won't need another round, but we'll see, I'm open to it. I do want to disclose how much this procedure has cost me in the past. Uh, so the first time I got it done with the doctor in Houston, um, it did cost $900 and that was with no help of insurance. I was just a um, cash only patient. Uh, same this time, I paid in cash uh, without help of insurance and it cost $500. Now this was not including any previous con consultations I had to have with the doctor. This was just purely the expense of just going in on that one day and getting the procedure done. I'm sure there are some doctors that will do it for more or less money 
and I'm sure it would also be significantly less if you do have a good health insurance plan and want to go that option. Now some things I didn't mention yet is um, I do want to make you guys aware if you're considering this that um, it can be very painful they do not provide anesthesia, at least never in my experience. I don't think that is a normal practice at all. Um, they will numb the area that they're about to inject. Um, but for me, all of the experiences were quite painful because, it, I mean, it even at the time hurt to touch my tendon because it was torn. So putting a needle straight into that area and putting fluid in it hurts quite a bit. But I, I'm i not like needle phobic necessarily. This might be hard for someone who is absolutely terrified of needles. Obviously I don't think they're pleasant, but I'm, I don't have a phobia, so it was okay. So it feels obviously like with most needles, there's a, a pinch sting kind of sensation when the needle goes in, then it starts to really burn. And then when they actually put the fluid in the area, oh my gosh, just be prepared. Take your deep breaths, press your head into the pillow. It doesn't take that long um, for it to be over with, but there is this really odd feeling of tons of pressure being put on your injured area. And it's just really hard to describe. I just wanna simply put it out there just so you're aware if you are curious, um, but this is not meant to deter you if you um, are considering it. Don't be afraid of it. It's just a simple thing that only takes a few minutes and then you're done. To me, it is not as scary as surgery. You don't have to deal with anesthesia if that scares you or being, you know, cut open, even though you're asleep. Either way, I'm not really that afraid of either option, but I don't know, maybe you're more interested in needles rather than surgery. I, I don't know, I don't know you. So I'm just putting this out there in case it helps you or if you're interested to know. Anyway, I think this video is getting long enough. Please leave any questions for me down below in the uh, in the comments, obviously in the comments, <laughs> if you do have any questions. Um, I will try to get back to you. Obviously, I'm not an expert, so maybe before asking me questions, I would just recommend doing a Google search. I have searched, um, obviously, about this in the past, as any wise patient would do, and there are some uh, obviously good things to say about it and some you know objective material out there but be aware that there's also a lot of weird articles that express this as like some sort of controversy like does it really work but the weird thing is that they're never conclusive about whether mostly if it doesn't work it's not conclusive it's just like saying things uh, like oh yes, people are experiencing positive uh, symptoms after the procedure, but it cannot be confirmed if it actually works. Now, it seems to me that an overwhelming majority of people do experience relief with their injuries and placebo patients in those uh, minor studies uh, didn't experience any relief. So just take that for what it is don't get too uh, deterred by any of those articles just also i'm putting that out there but anyway this video is quite long enough so i will talk to you guys later and please if you found this information really helpful i would really really appreciate it if you visited my page on patreon to consider contributing to this channel uh, financially so that hopefully i can um, continue to pour time into it. Uh, so I do appreciate you watching as well, and I'll see you next time. Bye.